In this video, you're going to learn how to build an extensible C-sharp application using AutoFact. We take an existing application and refactor it from compile time dependency definitions to runtime dependency definitions. Do you want to improve the extensibility of your applications? Let's go! Hi, I'm a software engineer with more than 10 years experience on the .NET platform. On this channel, you find videos about software development focusing on the .NET platform. My goal is to help you succeed as a .NET developer. If you want to improve your skills, subscribe to the channel and make sure you catch my future content for free. This video is the third part of my dependency injection video series. If you want to learn the fundamentals of AutoFact and dependency injection in general, check out the other videos in this playlist. In this video, we are going to improve the sample application we've built in the last video. Our goal is to make our sample application more extensible. In the first part of this video, I quickly summarize what we already did in this video series and where this video takes you. In the second part of this video, we take a look at the limitations of the current solution and discuss how we can potentially improve the extensibility of our application. In the last part of this video, we open Visual Studio and refactor our sample application to change our application to be more extensible after the source code has built. First, let's review what we already achieved in this series. We started in the first part of the series with a simple application with hard-coded dependencies. We changed the classes to receive dependencies as a constructor argument instead of creating instances inside the consumer classes. This step improved the reusability of our classes and their maintainability. In the second part of the series, we introduced AutoFact as a dependency injection framework and we took a look at the benefits of using a framework to resolve dependencies. When we run the application, the dependencies get set up in the program class while we build the AutoFact container. Once set up, we can consume our dependencies using dependency injection. We have a central place to set up our dependencies. The central place makes it easy to manage our dependencies. The current limitation is that we still define our code dependencies at compile time. If we want to change how the dependencies get wired up, we need to change the program class and rebuild the entire application. Imagine an application in production. The application not only needs to be rebuilt on the developer machine or rebuilt on the continuous integration system, but also deployed onto the user machines. This process can take quite some time, needs bandwidth, and depending on how complex the infrastructure is, it can cost a lot of money. Wouldn't it be great if we could define the dependencies at runtime instead of compile time? We want to refactor our sample application to improve its extensibility by defining code dependencies at runtime instead of compile time. It takes us three simple steps to achieve our goal. Step 1. We extract our interface and its implementations to separate assemblies. This step allows us to deploy the different implementations as we need them after the project has built. If this does not make any sense right now, don't worry, I'll show you exactly how and why it works. Step 2. We load the implementation dynamically at runtime using reflection. We don't know at compile time which implementation we want to use. Therefore, we need another solution how we load the implementation when our program starts. Step 3. We register our dynamically loaded implementation to the AutoFact container. Once we have an implementation at hand, we need to register it to the AutoFact container. This step remains the same as we set it up in the previous video of this series. If everything works out, all we need to do to exchange our implementation is to swap a file in the application folder. Now let's get our hands dirty and refactor the simple application. First of all, we need to create a new class library project for our iNotification service interface. We name the project dependencyinjection.notification and add it to the solution. Next, we delete the default class generated by Visual Studio and move the iNotification service interface to our new class library project. We fix the namespace definition and we're good to go. To make our application compile again, we need to add a reference from our application, the dependency injection project, to the new dependency injection.notification project. We need to use our user data class from both projects. Therefore, we need to create another class library that contains the domain types, which are used in both the notification service interface definition as well as in the application project. 
recreate the new class library and name it dependsinjection.core. Next, we move the user class from our application to the new core project and fix its namespace definition. We can now import the user class namespace into our iNotification service interface definition by adding a project reference to the core class library. We need to make sure that our user class access modifier is set to public. Finally, we can import the dependency injection core namespace in our interface definition. Now, to make the application compile again, we need to import both namespaces in our program class. To import the namespace for the user class, we need to add the core project as a dependency to the application. We still have an error on line 21, where we call the user service. Let's take a look at the user service class. We need to add a using statement for the user class as well as the iNotification service interface. We also need to take a look at our implementation of the iNotification service interface, the console notification class. We also need to add a using statement for the interface definition as well as the user class. Once again, we try to build the application and we still have a build error. The registration of the console notification class to the Autofact container does not build. As a quick fix, we add a using statement once again, but we will come back later and remove the registration in the program module, since getting rid of the registration in the program module is the primary goal of this video. We build again, and finally the build is successful. We start the application, and the console output tells us that the console notification class can be found, and it prints the message to the console that the username has been changed to Robert. We are still not able to exchange the implementation of the iNotification service interface because the console notification class is part of our application project and therefore built into the executable. Let's change that by adding another project to the solution. We call it notification and move the console notification class from the application to its class library and fix the namespace definition. Once again, we need to add a using statement and add the required project references. Our application won't compile because it cannot find the console notification class anymore, which we tried to register in the program module class. We fix this by removing the registration from the module. The application builds, but when we try to run it, we immediately get a component not registered exception with a message meaning that the artifact container does not contain a registration for the iNotification service type. It leads us to the next refactoring step. We need to load and register the implementations for our iNotification service interface dynamically at runtime. We add a new class to our application project and call it notification module. We want to implement a new Autofac module which loads and registers the available implementation for our iNotification service interface at runtime. We need to extend from Autofac's module class and override the load method. We get our notification service types by reading the files within the execution path of the application. We are all interested in files containing the dependency injection string and ending with notification.dll. This filter improves the performance of the next step. We use reflection to load the assembly by providing its name. Next, we load all types that implement the iNotification service and are of type class. As the last step in our notification module class, we register each notification service type to the Autofact container. We use the register type method without a generic type parameter because we provide an instance of the type class instead of the type definition. Now, let's make sure we add the notification module to the application by registering the module to the container in our program class. We start our application and it runs again. Well done. As a side note, the console notification DLL file has to be in the execution path of the application. The application does not have a reference to the console notification project. Therefore, if we build the application in Visual Studio, the console notification DLL file will not be copied to the execution folder of the application. We can fix this by adding the following post build script to the console notification project. 
Of course, choosing and adding a notification service implementation can now be done after the build process. And in a real application, this step would be part of the deployment process instead of the build process. But we want to keep things as simple as possible for now. We now want to implement another notification service. We add a new project to our solution and we call it dependency injection.fancy notification. We use the default clause, rename it and implement the iNotification service interface. To make things work, we need to add project reference to both the notification and the core projects. We add our implementation, add the afterbuild script and build the project. We press F5 to launch the application and we'll see your fancy notification in the console. That's it. Now we have an application which can be developed and built without making the decision on which notification service implementation should be used. Using the technique we learned in this video, we delay this decision to the deployment process. We only need to make sure that we have a single implementation assembly in our project folder. Otherwise, the last registration will win and will be used. Let's take a look at the project dependencies. First, we extracted the iNotification service interface to its own notification project. Next, we extracted the user class to its core project. To make the implementation exchangeable, we created a new project for the console notification. And last but not least, we added another implementation in its own project. In this video, we've learned how we can set up our code dependencies to be defined at runtime instead of compile time. That gives us more flexibility for our application by improving its extensibility. Imagine you want to release an interface to the public for other software developers to contribute implementations to your system. This technique allows you to build a simple plugin system. Maybe you want to release your interface to another team on your company instead of the public. That works too. It allows you to have an extension point for your software while you do not need to rebuild your entire application every time a new feature is added. Should you do this for every interface in your application? Absolutely not. Take this technique and add it to your toolbox. Use it where you think it helps your application's extensibility and use compile time defined dependencies where a lower level of extensibility is enough. If you find this approach useful or if you use other techniques to improve the extensibility of your .NET applications, please write it in the comments below. If you like this video, please hit the like button as it helps the channel grow and allows me to produce more free content in the future. If you want to improve your .NET developer skills, subscribe to the channel and I see you in the next.